Welcome to today's workshop brought to you by the United States Botanic Garden. My name is Libby Rhodes. I'm the Public Program Supervisor here at the Garden. As a reminder, the program's being recorded and it will be posted on both the U.S. Botanic Garden website in the coming weeks and also on Mary Ellen's website for future viewing. And if you're so inclined, please feel free to share what you've created during this course using the hashtag USBGart, and I will post that in the chat as well. So thank you very much, and on with the workshop. A little, here's a little bit about Mary Ellen. So Mary Ellen Carsley is a scientific and botanical illustrator, as well as an art educator. A former practicing architect, she has illustrated eight books and numerous articles for national and international journals. Her works have been included in the collections of the National Building Museum and the Library of Congress. She's a member of the Guild of Natural Science Illustrators, Maryland Federation of Art, the Art League at the Torpedo Factory, Washington Calligraphers Guild, and Guild of Book Workers. We're really excited to have her with us today doing Botanical Drawing 101. So as of right now, I'm gonna pass it on over to Mary Ellen, woohoo! <laughs> Thank you, Libby. And good morning to everyone. It's really wonderful to have you in my studio. I had no idea that I could fit this many people in, in my small room here, but that's actually where you are right now. This is the studio that I work um, and that, that I work in and also now that I teach from. So uh, especially in these times. So welcome and I'm really excited to teach this class. Teaching basic drawing is one of my favorite things to teach. And the reason is, is because I've always found that when people begin to draw, they, they, a whole new world opens up to them. Okay. So hopefully that's, what's going to happen for you today. Now I'm going to, I'm going to share my screen with you again. So you, we can look at a PowerPoint that I've prepared. Now, all of the images that you see today are going to be available to you on the, uh, on my website. And my website is right here. Okay. You're going to be able to see let me do that. So you're going to see my website right here. Here's my name. And the website's very easy to remember. It's maryellencarsley.com. And it's all going to be available on my botanical art and design reference page on that website. If you have any questions, you can email me. I, I like to tell my students that once you're my student, you're my student for life. So please feel free to email me if you have any questions. And, I, and if you wanna jot this down, go ahead and take a moment and do that. Or I encourage you to take a screenshot and then you'll have that available to you. But don't worry, I'm gonna come back to it a little bit later in the presentation if you don't get it all down right now. So let's get started. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to start thinking about the media and the materials that we use, okay? One of the things that I always recommend, and I asked you today just to have plain white paper, and but I do recommend that, uh, that you have an acid-free drawing paper. The reason for the acid-free is, is, so uh, is so that the paper remains stable and it won't yellow over time, okay? Now, Aspects of paper that you want to consider, we always want to get drawing paper, but aspects of, of, the, uh, of the paper that you always want to consider are tooth and weight. Tooth is the, is the uh, surface of the paper. It's actually the texture of the paper. Weight refers to the thickness of the paper. Okay, so you want your paper to be, the best way I can describe it is think of drawing paper, the, the dr typical drawing paper is being about two thicknesses, about, the, about two sheets thick of what normal printer paper would be. Okay, that's a nice weight for your drawing paper. You'll also notice that it's, it's typically somewhere between what the label will say is 60 pounds and 90 pound paper. And that, ref that refers to how much a certain volume of that paper weighs. So the tooth, you wanna get a smooth tooth unless you have some particular reason for using a rough tooth paper. So a nice smooth tooth paper is a great way to get started. Now, acid-free and archival, so, as I said, acid-free just to make sure that your uh, paper color stays stable over time. Archival, 
although the although the uh, the art conservators would appreciate you using archival paper, it's a little on the expensive side, and so I don't really recommend that you make that investment at this time. The next thing you want to think about is your pencil. Your pencil is composed of graphite, and um, and it it uh, it's a mixture with clay in it. Now, I recommend that we first get started with drawing with a 2H pencil, okay, but uh, th because that's a medium hardness, but also you may want to use a B pencil, which is very soft and easy to smudge. The hardness or softness of pencils refers to how much binder is in the, is in the graphite. And when that binder, when you have that binder, that is that that is releases the amount of the graphite for the same amount of pressure. So you want to have a nice medium soft pencil so that you can capture detail, but also so you can have um, so you can also have the uh, the the paper. Uh, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a second because I saw there were people in the waiting room. So I'm, I apologize. I'm going to let those folks in. And uh, but you want it. You'll notice the two pencils that I have. One is a 4B and one is a 2H. For the same amount of pressure, okay, they will make a they 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 will, they will make a different. You'll notice that the H pencil makes a lighter darkest value than the B pencil, which makes a very, very dark value, okay? So, so, but the advantage of using the 2H pencil is that you'll be able to capture more detail. This pencil, you'll get darker values with the, the B pencil, but it's a little bit smudgier, for lack of a better term, and that pencil, it, you won't be able to capture quite as much detail. So, now, Moving on, so with that, I'm going to I'm going to switch back. Uh, I'm going to also talk to you about we have the pink the a pink eraser, okay? That's what I I recommend usually to have for that. Uh, and this is this is erasing for what is what is called just complete eradicating. Now, if you're looking for if you're looking for a pen for a different kind of eraser, I didn't recommend it for our class today, but just so you know, it's here. It's called a kneaded eraser, and this actually can be, you'll notice in, with, in the screen with my hands, it has, it has a gummy quality to it. Sometimes it's called a gummy eraser. Uh, this can actually be used as a drawing tool for lifting out highlights, and we'll talk a little bit about how we can use erasers, not just as eradicators, but also as drawing tools as well. Now, when it comes to when it comes to the smudging aspect, another tool that you may see is something called a tortillion. Now, this is the example right here. This is just a simple rolled piece of paper that instead of using your finger to actually smudge with, you can use the tortillion. There's advantages to the tortillion in that it doesn't have the oils that your hands do, and all, which can interfere with your drawing in the future, uh, especially as you're layering graphite on. But then there's also the advantage that it has a very, very tiny tip on the end, so you're able to go into very small areas and, and work uh, and, and just make little adjustments that way. Okay, so some of, our, some of our tools there, I'll lay those out. I'll remove this drawing so you can see them just a, a little bit more clearly on, on my work surface here. The other thing that I recommend as well for using is a simple a simple pencil sharpener okay um i'm i'm not uh, i'm a bit of a luddite when it comes to technology so one of the things that i really recommend is using just the pocket pencil sharpener very very easy to use environmentally friendly and and it gives you a wonderful it, it gives you a wonderful point on your tip uh, uh, the tip of your pencil so you get a very very tight uh, a very very tight tip on there now I'll I'll show my screen one more time because if you if you would like you'll notice on the um, you'll 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 notice on the on the view here let me go here oh, thank you Be patient with me there we go 
we'll go back just one, one more time here. So you'll notice here that um, I have some links. These, again, are available to you on your website, this whole presentation is. So think of this as the notes that you would take, okay? And if you wanna learn more about paper and determining uh, which paper you'd like to buy best, I have a link here to a, to a great instructional YouTube about selecting artist paper. And if you wanna learn about the uh, history of the pencil, which is really fascinating because the wooden pencil was invented by uh, uh, Henry David Thoreau, uh, you can check that out here, okay? Now, let's, get, let's start diving in about our subject. Now, when we start to think about, uh, think about our subject, one of the things that we really, really want to do is we want to think of, about the difference between looking and seeing. We look at things every day, but seeing involves the act, an act of the mind as well as just a physical act of our eyes gazing upon something. When we see, we perceive, we perceive it. There, our mind is thinking about what we're looking at and and constructing and deconstructing what we see at the same time. So we think of realistic and observational drawing in this as an act of translation. We're looking at a three-dimensional object and we're going to translate it to a two-dimensional surface. Our tools for doing that, particularly in pencil, using pencil as the medium, is line, value, and shape. So we're gonna be thinking about that a great deal today. So you're gonna actually think about how you look at something. How does your eye move when you look at the subject? Now, the subjects that we're going to be using today are simple flowers. Now, that's a geometric uh, term, not a, not a botanical term. So by simple flowers, I mean flowers like we have the dogwood and one, one of the uh, members of the daisy family here. So flowers that are can be distilled down to a simple geometric shapes. So when we look at, and of course right now, the beautiful uh, lilacs as well as camellias, these flowers are far more complex and they take a little more experience to understand how to tackle. So for today's purposes, we're gonna look at a flower. We're actually gonna be studying a vinca. Um, we're gonna be looking at a flower that geometrically is and structurally much, much simpler. The more practice you get, then you'll be able to tackle these flowers. Now, some recommended text for your bookshelf I have is Arthur Guptel's Drawing and Sketching with Pencil, as well as Friedrich Frank's The Zen of Seeing, which is a delightful book that's entirely hand-drawn hand and handwritten. So if you're curious about what's uh, about uh, learning more about sort of the mindset of drawing, the Zen of seeing, I highly recommend. And for delving deeper than we're going to be able to do in the time that we have today, I recommend Guptel's book. So, so what we're going to do now is we're going to start to think about start to think about our our subject and our setup. So you want to get comfortable where you where you are and I'm gonna uh, and we have a few more people who are are coming in. So that's why I stopped sharing my screen with you. So I apologize for the switching back and forth at times, but I want, I'm, and I'm unable to let people in otherwise. <laughs> so I'm gonna share my screen again with you and you're gonna be able to see a picture of what my studio set, setup looks like. And so what you see here today is, um, this is actually where I'm sitting and this is our subject. now. So what I recommend is that you have a nice flat uh, drawing surface that's wider than your paper, good lighting, lighting that you can control. The best circumstance is lighting that you have a single, a single light on the subject. Also, when you think about your subject, it's always best to draw from life if you can. Um, and uh, it, it, because that way, the composition, the lighting, all of those things are your choice and not the choice of another artist who's taking the picture, okay? But when you do draw outside, you wanna make sure that you have safe and comfortable seating uh, and also that you have a hard drawing surface, which is why I often recommend that you have a hard cover for your sketchbook. 
Um, when you draw from reference photos, I recommend that you draw preferably from your own photos. And again, there's two more books here that I recommend about, about uh, when you get started on your uh, on the book for your bookshelf. Uh, Keith West, How to Draw Plants. And then if you're curious in the history of botanical illustration, Wilfred Blunt is the last word in that. And again, everything that I have here is also going to be in the PowerPoint that will be on my website. So you'll be able to refer to them. So remember I mentioned to you, we're talking about your subject when you're an and uh, so we're doing a simple flower today. Today, our flower is uh, a flower that I, I am very, I'm actually quite fond of, okay? This is the, this is the vinca, okay? And uh, sometimes people call it periwinkle. It has all kinds of varieties to it. But one of the things you wanna keep in mind is understanding the basic structure of the flower. Now, you could learn all of the names, that's helpful, and eventually you will just from practice, but it's important to, to notice that you understand that the flower has the petals, that they are attached to a receptacle underneath the, the flower here, and that these sepals, that are uh, they help support the petal structure of the flower. When we get the sense of the structure, we draw with knowledge. And that's something that's really, really important, uh, important to do because that knowledge comes through in the drawing that we have. Also too, what's really important is that we start to see those big shapes and how they relate to one another. Now you're going to notice that we've got a perfect circle that the petals make, okay? They themselves are actually a very, a, a, a very interesting shape. We're gonna talk about that in a little more detail. And notice we have this pentagon on the inside that helps, that, that helps organize the petals and it's the folds of the petals coming together there. Now, if you look deeply down inside the flower, you'll notice the reproductive structure of the flower, the stigma, okay, as well as the stamen uh, down here. And then very, very down, uh, farther down deeper in the flower, we have the ovary uh, in there. Notice that the stem is always in perfect alignment with the center of the flower. Now that might seem obvious when I say that, but you'd be surprised how often people draw the stem unrelated to the center of the flower. Once you sort of make deliberate mental note of everything that you're seeing, the shapes and the structures, again, you'll draw with knowledge and that will come through in, in a beautiful drawing. So, because part of a beautiful drawing is having one that is the one that makes logical sense. If it doesn't make structural sense, that'll be distracting to the viewer. So, let's get our pencil and paper out and let's get started drawing. Okay. So, I'm going to set our are going to set our, aside our subject there. Now, should you need the subject? Um, and that is on my uh, on my website. So, I'm going to. Click on, click on sharing my screen here for a moment, okay? And if you go to my, um, if you go onto the PowerPoint here, you'll be able to see the subject right here. And this is what we're going to be getting started with. And here are our basic shapes, okay? So you should be able to see my hands. And what I'm going to do is we're going to get started with, um, let me see here. We're going to get started by drawing our by by drawing our vinca. So, what we want to start with first is we're going to we're going to be able to um, there we go. We'll go through here. Let's go right on to the to our steps here. So here's our subject. Okay, and what you're going to start with is a basic circle. Now, I'll talk to you about, about a little bit about measuring. You want to start working with your flower in such a way that you can, you can easily measure it. Now, you don't need a ruler to do this. You can just use your, you can just use your pencil itself. So when you do this, you can, if you can hold the flower, that's wonderful. But if not, that's okay. You can hold it up right up against the flower, wherever it happens to be. 
and you can use the tip of your pencil and your thumb to determine to determine the width of the flower. So I'm just going to measure it just like that and then have a sense of how large my of how large the circle needs to be that I'm going to draw. I'm going to make two points on my on my paper here. Now, I know that a circle is symmetrical about two axes, both a vertical axis and a horizontal axis. So what I'm going to do is I'm a, I'm going to take that same dimension and I'm going to put it along the vertical axis. And now I have four points. Okay? So delightful because if you were if, if now all we have to do is connect the dots. So using your hand in whichever way is most comfortable for you, okay, you will you're just going to create four identical arcs or as close as you can. Now when you draw, okay, it's helpful to to draw both from your elbow and your shoulder. Okay, it also helps to turn the paper. You're not breaking the rules if you turn the paper. It's okay. You're allowed to turn the paper. It's not like writing. So we come up with a nice circle. Now, take a moment, look at your circle, okay? Turn it all the way around and make sure that it looks perfectly round from all of those angles, okay? Now, you very conveniently know the center of your circle, okay? And so from here, what you're going to do is you want to look, again, closely at your flower. Now, the vinca, rather inconveniently, I might add, <laughs> does not have petals that radiate along these main axes. So one of the things that I'm going to do right away is I'm going to take my pencil uh, and my eraser, and I'm going to remove those lines just so they're not confusing to me. But they're there light enough that I can see them. Now, when I look at my when I look at my flower here, I notice that I have this very tiny pentagon in the center. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little measurement of the size of my pentagon around the center there. And I'm just going to I'm just going to sketch it in. It has it's it's actually rather lovely. I can and I'm going to try to make those little arcs even all the way around. There we go. Might take a little adjusting like that. Now the one advantage that we find here, now that we have our large, our large shape here, the next largest shape down that's that we see that's really uh, apparent to our eye then we're going to create the axes for the petals off of those points five petals and we're going to have five axes now one of the things that you should always think about is as you look at your subject is finding that ideal that ideal shape of the flower rather than getting caught up in little details okay it would be very easy to to get to get concerned about this little tear or about the way this petal curls over but when i'm first drawing as i said i'm going to go from the really large shapes and go high, as a kind of a hierarchy and down to more and more detailed. Now, if you look on, if you look on the screen that we have there, I have sketched for you an ideal petal, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to sketch in five ideal petals. Okay, and notice that my petals, how they meet each other, they meet on that midpoint. right between in the arc that's in the side of the pentagon there 
So I'm going to I'm going to sketch that sketch that petal in. And notice that it's always the low point of the petal, okay, is on the same side as the petal goes around as the petals wind their way around the flower. So we get that wonderful pinwheel effect as it goes around the flower. Now, the wonderful thing about drawing is the more you draw, the more you see. And I've probably already said something to you that made you go, oh, that's that's right. I, I didn't see that. And it's so fantastic because we're so busy and we just don't see the wonder. And, and this is such a ubiquitous little flower. We just don't, you know, we just don't see them. They're these little purple dots that we we barely notice out of the corner of our eye as we're walking the dog or strolling with the baby. But then when we stop to draw them, we find there's a whole world and, and, and there's these, this wonderful gift waiting for us to look at. Now you'll notice as I'm walking, as I'm sketching along, I'm, I'm making corrections, that's okay. You know, it's it's all good. We don't all get it right the first time. That one petal is just being a little a little bugger for me. There we go. All right. Okay. So now I've got my basic flower. And now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out those construction lines that I don't need. Okay. I'm just going to pull those out. Any kind of extraneous lines. I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean it up a little, basically. There we go. So now I have my I have my flower there. Okay. Basic, basic shape. Now you're probably saying, but she didn't draw the little tear. I know there's somebody out there that's really bothering them. And that's okay. <laughs> that means you have a wonderful eye for detail, and that is a gift as well. This is the point where you get to put in all the little details, okay? So I'm going to set my flower here because I just realized that I was casting a shadow onto my own drawing. My apologies for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to put that little I'm going to start to put in that little tear there. I'm getting small, so I'm going to put my glasses on. I graduated to big girl glasses about about two years ago, so I'm going to wear my big girl glasses, and I'm going to start to put in all of those wonderful little details, little folds. Now, you might be, say to yourself, but, but wait, how did she do that? I am simply drawing the lines that I see. I see the edge here folding over, and just behind it, there's a straight line. And I'm going to draw the petal just as I see it. I'm going to bring in just a little cut there, and then there's a, a little a little fray on that one. Look at it; it's already starting to look more and more like my flower. I think I need to make this petal just a little wider because flowers are like people; they're individuals. There's no, you know. That they're they're perfect in their imperfections. And I'm gonna start to fill in all of that. Okay, there we go. So now I have my now basically I have my drawing all laid out. Now what we're going to do, this is why it's very important to have a single light source, because we want to simplify the shadows that were that we have for our subject. And so I have my flower here in front of me. And what I'm going to start to do is I'm going to squint at the flower so I can see the areas where there's darks and there's lights. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going
going to draw in, and you can see this in step number three uh, on the on, on the screen there, I'm going to draw in the shapes of the shadows, and I'm going to very, very lightly, very lightly, okay, I'm going to begin to fill that in with a value, okay? So just, you'll notice that when I fill in with value, I work very lightly, okay? I don't want to put down, don't be in a rush to do this, okay? Because even though you it is pencil and you can remove it, it does smudge up your drawing surface. And also, I want you to think of graphite as there are these, when you look at them under the microscope, there's these little shiny hockey pucks. That's what they look like. And so what you're doing is you're laying down all these very slick little tiny particles and they're getting caught in the little surfaces of this little hills and valleys on the, on the paper. And you don't want to work so hard. You don't want to be pressing so hard that you're, you're going to flatten out those hills and valleys. You know, you don't want to be a steamroller going over your paper. You want to try to keep a nice light hand. Now, the drawing always disturbs people at this point. It's like, oh, it, it's, it looks all spotty. I don't like it. And, you know, and it, it has this, this kind of unattractive look, but don't worry about it. We're going to do something to, to, to solve that problem right away. So there we go. There we go. I have all of my, my darks and lights. I'm probably going to add a few more. I can see where I might have missed a few there. I, I'm going to start to lighten up my edges a little bit. Okay. Because mine, I made them a little dark. I want to make sure you could see them. But now, I'm going to start to put on a lot more value so you're not going to have as much trouble seeing my work. Okay, I'm going to get that out of the way. I, I have a dust brush, but I haven't been using it. Now, this might seem extremely counterintuitive, the next thing we're going to do. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put value over the entire piece. And actually, what's the best way you're going to do, even over the shadows that you just did, you're going to notice they're going to get a little darker because you're layering on top of that. Now, I am avoiding that white center, okay? I'm trying to leave some of the white of the paper. And notice as I put down my value, I'm working with the natural venation pattern, the natural vein pattern, okay, that I see, that grain that I actually see in the petal itself, okay? I'm working right with that because that's going to translate through my drawing as the texture of the petal, okay? Lovely. Now, see how that drew all of that all together? Really, 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 really helpful to draw all that together. Now, this is the fun part, okay? Now, this is where you can take your eraser and you're gonna to start to go in and you're gonna pull out those lighter areas in the center here. It got a little dark in there when we first started drawing, that's okay. That happens. We're gonna pull out that center there because we want the things that are light to be light and we want the things that are dark to be dark. And then what I'm going to do is you're going to say, but oh, she lost her center. Ah, that may be true for right now. But now what I need to do is use the tip of my pencil and I'm going to go in and I'm going to get those tiny shadows that are inside, that are inside my flower. And look at that happen. And then there is my, there's my stamen. I can see it. It's got a little, couple little highlight, okay? And there's that little ridge. Look at that, that, see, you thought you lost that pentagon, but look, it's coming back, okay? And we bring that back by adjusting the values around the center. And remember, we're trying to leave what is light to be light. And what has shadow on it 
to have the shout to keep the shout out. Now, one of the things that can be very, very confusing, okay, is how do I make something that's light become really apparent, especially if it's next to the white of the paper? Well, that's when we take the white of the paper away and we put in some contrasting background so that we can create contrast and emphasis, okay? Those are two of our big friends, okay, when we're sketching. Notice that I'm adjusting my whole value scale here, okay, in order to capture just right in these little areas here to capture the that white area that that's on the interior of the petal and right on the edge of the petal. There's these beautiful little little ridges right in there. They're so lovely. I, I want to make sure that I catch those. And so I'm introducing a little bit of contrasting background. And I'm going to come in here and start to work that petal all along. Now I'm going to stop drawing for a second and I'm going to uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen, but don't worry because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the I'm going to put the finished drawing down here that I had prepared for you, okay? So you're going to notice now when we're looking at the finished flower that I have here, a couple of things that I want to point out to you. Notice how uh, the structures that are inside the flower, I've really kept them quite simplified, okay? So they're really reduced down. The stamen is really reduced down to being just basically a series of tiny, tiny circles there. Notice to hear how I've maintained that ridge of white by creating these areas of contrast so that we can have it. And then of course the background here, much, much darker, okay? And then I've put a hint of the leaves in there, okay? And even a little bit of their of their vein pattern in the leaves there. And all of this is accomplished by changing the value scale, okay? Having a full range from your darkest dark to the absolute white of the paper. And, and we work by, when we work that value by, after we draw the full shape of the flower, creating that middle tone so that we can make the values go darker by adding more graphite, or we can make it lighter by removing some of the graphite with our eraser. Now, the pink pearl eraser is a wonderful eraser to have, but this is a handy little guide too, the kneaded eraser, and the advantage that the kneaded one has is that you'll notice I can actually take it and shape it so that I can go in and pull out very very narrow highlights here. When I do this, the term is lifting, and I can lift out value, and you know, and then I can come back in with my pencil and reshape some of that area. And then, of course, you can see the advantage of having the tortillion here as well for blending these tiny, tiny areas like that. Now, and again, we have a flower that you know. The, the, the ridge, uh, you know, it has, it started out with those perfect petals, but each one, you know, each one was altered and changed to capture the personality of this particular flower. So I'll let you all draw for a second there. And Now, a few things aside that I do want to mention to you that I mentioned in my, in my slideshow have to do that you'll be able to see. 
they have to do with how you hold your pencil. And I mentioned this a little bit earlier. You should feel free to move your paper as you draw. Also, to change how you hold your pencil. It might be most comfortable when you're, when you're uh, getting into detailed areas to hold your pencil as you do when you write. So you have maximum amount of control. However, when you're trying to maintain a very, very light hand, it helps to hold the pencil more, more like this in your hand, a little bit lighter, a little more with just the thumb the index finger and your second finger so that you can just very, very lightly put down, just put down the value. Notice how much lighter you work and that you tend to work from your shoulder, your elbow, when you hold your pencil. And don't be shy about twisting your wrist, turning your wrist and using also the side of the pencil as well. There are times when I find it very, very handy to take the pencil and actually sculpt the tip of the pencil a little bit so that I have more of a flat area on one side and a much more pointed area on the other. And then I can turn my pencil to have that kind of control. So I hope this was helpful to you today. And I and uh, as I said, I'll show you so you can see what my website looks like so it's not unfamiliar to you. And then that way, you'll have the opportunity to, um, uh, to go and take some time and digest this for yourself. So when you get to my website, the page is going to look like this. It's going to say Botanical Art and Design Course References, and you're right at the top, Basic Botanical Drawing, okay? And you'll be able to see our subject here, all right? We have, and all of, all of the drawings that I've done today are here for you to look at. You can click on them in the gallery, and they, they do enlarge. It's just that, there you go. <laughs> Our internet's a little slow today, and uh, so you can see all of them, all of them there. Oh, well, there we go. Now we're back to that's my home page, okay. And again, you can get right, right here. You go right there, and then when you scroll down, the slideshow with all of the notes um, that that you uh, from today's class is here as well, okay. So, and you'll be able to scroll through the slideshow. Everything that I've mentioned to you, all of the references, all of the YouTube videos, pictures of everything that we've done are available to you. And as I said, if you have any questions or I would love it if you would like to share your work with me, um, please feel free to email me. So I'll stop sharing now and I'll turn it over to Libby. Thank you guys. Thank yes. you. Thank you for coming. Uh, and make sure you share out your art with hashtag USBG art if you're feeling so inclined. Have a good day, everyone.